Our sun pranks us with a far-sighted eruption, and a gorgeous non-Earth-directed solar storm launch shows us that Region 3697 isn't the only game in town. Those stories and more in this week's Spotlight. Our sun is being a bit of a trickster this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we can see region 3697 up to its old tricks. It has been a big flare player. In fact, on June 1st, it lights off a big X-class flare. You can see it right here, bam. Then almost immediately afterwards, we see this gorgeous halo structure in coronagraphs. And it leads a lot of people to think that we've got this Earth-directed solar storm coming from region 3697, and it's a repeat of what we had early in May, but not so fast. As we take a closer look at what happened, we have Halo CME, who's a member of the SDO AIA team, and he did some difference imagery analysis to really kind of reveal some very important features. Number one, we have that big solar flare right there, and you can see it like that. Now, normally what we would see if there was a big solar storm being launched is a lot of dark regions all around this with a big blast wave that propagates out all along this disk. You can see the outline of the sun here in black. Can you see it all the way around? Now, now, there's not a lot of dimming, so this isn't very eruptive. And then look to the southwest or southeast over here. Watch this. Do you see that big shock wave? Well, that actually was coming from behind the limb of the sun. It wasn't coming from this region at all. In fact, after that shock wave disappears, now this region begins to unfold. And you can see it, you can now see kind of a shock wave kind of blasting off this way. That's gonna take material to the south of it. And you can see this thing kind of unfolding like a flower to the north as well. Watch how long it continues to unfold. And it begins to get other regions in here involved in this whole eruption. So this was a very different kind of eruption than what we originally thought. As we look at it from that perspective, now looking at the blast in slow motion, we can see there's the big X-class flare. Now you don't see a big wave propagating this way, but you do start seeing some dimming regions unfold in here. You can see it unfold this way, and then you can also start seeing it ripple up a little bit. In fact, Look at this. Before too long, you're seeing region 3698 and region 3705 get involved. See the dimming in here? So that gives us a totally different perspective on what's happening. We see that first halo. That is actually associated with that shock wave from the far side of the sun. So this structure is actually a solar storm that's going away from Earth not towards Earth. Then we get the second blast. That's this part here, and that's from most of the stuff that's going to the southeast of Earth. And then remember, we've got all the stuff that's kind of propagating north, and that actually could be this third set of structures up in here, and even a little bit down in here. So we may have had actually three separate solar storms fire with only one of them. The last little bit being what grazed Earth here over the last day or so, but no big solar storm. Now, if we needed any more confirmation, we can also take a look at the Solar Orbiter Styx instrument because that instrument actually had uh, ha has the, the light curves that show us how big the solar flare was that happened on the sun's far side. And according to the Styx instrument, this was an M2.8 class flare that caused that big shock wave on the sun's far side and that big beautiful halo that was moving away from us, not towards us. And if we take a look at the Styx uh, indicators for where the solar flare originated, it sure looks like it's going to be somewhere close to region 3683 or maybe even 3674. Kind of hard to tell because it's just an estimate, but we'll talk more about those regions in a minute. Meanwhile, as we return back to our Earth-facing disk, take a look at this big filament. We thought this thing was going to erupt, but it sure hasn't. It just kind of toyed with us. Once again, the sun is just pranking us. And so then we took a look at the east limit of the sun and you're really beginning to see some of these regions rotate into Earth view and they've got a lot of structure up here high in the upper atmosphere. In fact, you see a little bit of things erupting, but take a look at this filament here over the last 24 hours. This region had a spectacular launch. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pause it right there and back it up just a smidge. You can even see this blast wave. Can you see this blast wave as it blasts off? Watch this thing. It's like a perfect 
just textbook example of these big solar storms. In fact, when we take a look at it from Suvi's perspective, you can see even more material. Look at that gorgeous structure as it moves off. Now, this structure is not Earth-directed, but what it does let us know is that filaments are also at play here. It's not just the big regions. So not only do we have to worry about region 3697, especially as it rotates to the west limb, but we still have all these filaments. This one is in the Earth's strike zone, and we've got lots of stuff playing on the east limb, especially high up in the upper atmosphere like that, means it's very unstable. So as these regions rotate into Earth view, it looks like we're going to be still having big solar flares and also the potential for big solar storms. Now, as we switch to our sun's far side, we can no longer use Stereo A imagery to look at the sun's far side because Stereo A is looking at the same side of the sun as we are. So we have to switch to AIA and HMI imagery of about two weeks ago to get an idea of what kind of regions are lurking there. And as we put this into motion, you should immediately see regions 36, 83, 74, and 79. These were big players the last time they were in Earth view, and we know that region 3683 is the likely suspect in firing that big M-class flare and that big, beautiful, far-sighted halo eruption, so solar storms could be on the menu. In fact, as we pull up our JSOC HMI helioseismology far-sighted monitor, you can see what's in gray is on the front side and what's in gold is on the far side. And as these regions rotated onto the sun's far side from the last time we saw them, the, look at these dark regions. You can definitely tell they're surviving their far side passage now. In fact, region 3674 and 83 may even be merging a little bit, but they are uh, could definitely be big flare players as they rotate back into Earth view, which will happen over the next couple days. You can also see region 3685 uh, and 86. Those regions are were big players last time. You can see how large those two regions were together, and they could definitely be giving us some more uh, activity, even if these regions here fizzle out. So expect to see the potential for more big solar flares. Uh, in that big, uh, fl the solar flux levels will rise, as well as the big flare possibilities that will stay up, and big solar storms could be back on the menu. And even if these regions fizzle out as they rotate into Earth view over the next couple days, in about a week, we have this set of regions as well. So it looks like we're going to have activity that's going to be here to stay. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase with the new moon being on the 6th. And by the 11th, the moon will be about 25% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, now is your perfect chance. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are dealing with unsettled conditions right now. This is because we really just don't have a lot going on. We don't have any fast solar wind coming at us, and every solar storm that's been launched has not been launched towards Earth. So NOAA's giving us only about a 20% chance of minor storm conditions at high latitudes, and this will last over the next couple days. Things will then calm down even more, so we only have about a 25% chance. So Aurora photographers, it looks like you're just going to need to hang on a little bit longer because we don't have any solar storms in the works yet. And at mid-latitudes, well, the story is pretty much the same. We're expecting unsettled conditions with only about a 10% chance of activity. So this means that the conditions are going to remain mostly calm throughout the week. Of course, uh, things could change very quickly if we get a solar storm launch. So take all of these uh, long five-day outlooks with a bit of a grain of salt. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are still sitting well into the triple digits for solar flux, and this is because region 3697 is still rotating across the Earth facing disk and will be for the next couple days. Plus, we have those new regions rotating into Earth view, so a solar flux is going to stay remain in the good propagation range. Of course, we have moderate noise on the bands right now, and that's because we have multiple big flare players in Earth view. Noah's giving us about a 60% chance of M-class flares. That's at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout over the next few days. And even about a 20% chance of X-class flares, and that's mainly from region 3697. That will easily be over the next three days. Likely things will be calming down after that because we do have that region rotating to the sun's far side. And it's going to be hard to tell, but we definitely expect to have more big flare players on the menu rotating into Earth view even over the next week. 
And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, we are all in the green when it comes to big radiation storms. We're sitting at the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. This is also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. But we do have about a 20% chance of a radiation storm at the S1 to S2 level easily over the next couple days. That might even pop up to 25% chance as region 3697 rotates to the sun's west limb. So you high-risk passengers, and this does include air crew and frequent flyers, this forecast could change at any moment. So be sure to check those ICAO advisories regularly and take precaution in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is remaining mostly calm, but that could change at any moment. So your aurora photographers, make sure you keep your eyes on the forecast because we do have a lot of solar storms being launched. They're just not being launched at Earth at the moment. Now, you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we are still dealing with region 3697 as it rotates to the sun's west limb. That does mean we still have a big chance for R1 to R2 level radio blackouts and even a skosh of a chance for R3 level radio blackouts. This will continue for the next couple days, although things may calm down just a little bit. However, we do have those new regions rotating into Earth view, and likely the R1 to R2 level radio blackouts will continue. So if you want to break from them on Earth's day side, well, check out the Earth's night side. We don't have any solar storms hitting, and so Things should be pretty quiet there. And now you GPS users, well, you know, things aren't nearly as bad as what they were a couple weeks ago. Reception isn't super great on the day side, especially near dawn and near dusk because of those intermittent radio blackouts. But on Earth's night side, reception should be pretty top notch, except if you're at real super low latitudes. So just kind of hang in there and hopefully things will continue to quiet down. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.